Welcome to another Big Train Tour at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This month, we'll be taking a look at one of the oldest surviving narrow-gauge railroad passenger cars, not only in Colorado, but also the entire U.S. Today, Denver and Rio Grande Western business car number B8 is proudly displayed in Golden with a rich history to share. Hi, I'm Paul Hammett, Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. Our subject railroad car was originally built for the Denver and Rio Grande as a baggage car, but ended up being converted into a business car intended for use by division superintendents and other railroad officials. Business car B8 has the distinction of being one of the earliest arrivals to the newly established Colorado Railroad Museum in 1959 and additionally, it is today the oldest passenger car in the museum's collection. Come join me now as we take a look at the history of this Colorado classic and how the car's appearance and its uses changed over the years before it was eventually brought to Golden. As is the case with many of the older railroad cars in the museum's collection, our subject, car number B8, offers a look into the versatility of wood car building. Virtually all freight and passenger cars were constructed of wood in the 19th century, which in turn meant that any well-equipped railroad shop could readily repair and remodel cars and also build new ones from scratch. Car B8 would demonstrate the ease of working with wood repeatedly during its service life. Business car B8, otherwise known as business car K, did not start out looking anything like it does today. Instead, it began life in the 1870s, with the specifics a bit blurred. Very little documentation survives from the earliest years of the Denver and Rio Grande, Colorado's pioneering narrow-gauge railroad. Thus, exactly what the car originally looked like and when and where it was built remains subject to ongoing research and interpretation. Some accounts suggest that it was originally a baggage car carrying the number one, while others suggest it was a coach numbered four. These dueling counts likely are due to the fact that another car was originally intended to become the original business car K. For some reason, the designation was assigned but never actually applied, and then things changed. The car that would actually become our subject car, business car K, was thus the second car to be assigned this letter. The most likely predecessor to this second car K was Denver and Rio Grande baggage car number one. Built sometime before 1879, this early narrow gauge baggage car's original length was around 36 feet, and the car featured a flat, slightly arched roof, a style found on a number of early passenger cars on the Denver and Rio Grande. Operating on the Rio Grande in the late 1870s, baggage car number one would have spent most of its time running between Denver and Pueblo. This limited operating territory was a consequence of the fact that the three-foot gauge railroad had not yet launched its westward expansion plans, which would begin in earnest about 1880. A Denver and Rio Grande map from the very next year's official guide to the railways shows the railroad in the midst of this ambitious expansion circa 1881. The expansion included the railroad's new main line through the Royal Gorge, which was being constructed over Marshall Pass to Gunnison, then on to Grand Junction and Salt Lake City. During the same time frame, the Denver and Rio Grande had also just completed construction of its San Juan extension, southwest from Pueblo via La Veda Pass to Alamosa, then west over Cumbres Pass to Durango and north to the mining town of Silverton. Baggage car number one was likely used all over the growing Rio Grande system in the early 1880s. In 1886, a system-wide renumbering of passenger cars saw the car assigned a new number, 100. But then, something much more transformational happened. In 1887 and 1888, the newly renumbered baggage car was brought into the shop, most likely the Rio Grande's main Burnham Shops complex in Denver. There, it was completely overhauled and refashioned into a business car intended for use by railroad operating executives. When completed, it was given a new and very simple designation, the letter K, and assigned to the superintendent of the Rio Grande's third division. This operating division encompassed what were known as the West End Lines of the railroad, 
stretching from Salida and Gunnison on the east to Montrose on the west, and north to Grand Junction and south to Uray, plus several branch lines. This division also included the narrow-gauge Poncha Pass line, which was extended in 1890 to connect Alamosa with Salida via the northern San Luis Valley. In this pre-automobile age, railroad executives needed to travel along their railroad to conduct business and inspect facilities. A purpose-built car, such as K, served rather like a traveling mobile headquarters, comparable perhaps to a stylish recreational vehicle today. A desk provided office space. Meals were prepared and served on board, and of course, sleeping accommodations for 10 were provided for those traveling along with the superintendent. Business Car K was described in an 1891 written account as being equipped with a baker heater and oil lamps for lighting. There was an observation room with large windows, plus an open platform with a railing at the rear. Four sections which could serve as seating during the daytime and be converted into beds at night. A full kitchen, plus a toilet saloon. The kitchen or galley area was quite compact on the car. The baker heater, which supplied heat for the entire car, was located next to a wood-fired stove. The car's cook, likely the only service personnel assigned when the car was on the road, slept in a wood upper berth, which pulled down at night above the sink and the food preparation surfaces. This folio drawing from company records shows Carquet as it appeared between 1888 and 1916. The car body itself was 35 feet 10 and a half inches long and 8 feet 2 inches wide. The car's roofline features the upper clear story roof plunging down at the ends to create a distinctive form known as bullnose. Car K originally sported a rich maroon color utilized by the Denver and Rio Grande on all of its passenger cars prior to 1918. Less than 10 years after it launched major narrow-gauge railroad expansions into western Colorado, the Denver and Rio Grande was busy creating a standard-gauge mainline route between Denver, Pueblo, Grand Junction, and Salt Lake City. This new standard-gauge route was necessary in order to stave off east-west competitors, including the Colorado Midland Railroad. The new standard gauge mainline, which headed west from Pueblo and north out of Salida, then up and over Tennessee Pass and west through Glenwood Canyon to Grand Junction, was completed in 1890. The Rio Grande Western, an affiliate of the Denver and Rio Grande, standard gauged and operated the connecting route between Grand Junction and Salt Lake City. During standard gauging of the line, Business Car K reportedly was equipped with standard gauge trucks and assigned to a railroad superintendent based in Leadville. The car was used in work trains as crews between Leadville, Glenwood Springs, and Aspen labored to convert the Denver and Rio Grande's tracks from narrow to standard gauge. Other Rio Grande business cars were used similarly just a few years later when crews standard gauged the railroad's tracks over Laveda Pass between Walsenburg and Alamosa in 1899. In 1892, Business Car K was part of a consist that carried famed photographer William Henry Jackson as he traveled over southwestern Colorado's Rio Grande Southern Railroad, carrying his darkroom with him. Business Car K was photographed as part of this special narrow-gauge train, along with a Rio Grande Southern business car named Rico, which today is also preserved at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Several memorable images were exposed as Jackson's train made its way over Lizardhead Pass and the famed Ofer Loop while traversing the rugged San Juan Mountains. By the early 1890s, with the conversion of its through mainline to standard gauge, the Denver and Rio Grande found itself with large amounts of surplus narrow gauge rolling stock, some of which was sold or leased to the Rio Grande Southern. Business Car K was not among the rolling stock sold off, and in fact, the car reportedly was once again riding on standard gauge trucks until about 1903, thus allowing for its use on the railroad's standard gauge mainline. The first years of the 20th century were troubled ones for the Denver and Rio Grande. Financier George Gould, son of the late railroad speculator Jay Gould, took control of the company 
along with the connecting Rio Grande Western and the Missouri Pacific Railroads. Together, these three lines became Gould's money machines to finance construction of the Western Pacific Railroad between Salt Lake City and Oakland, California, via scenic Feather River Canyon in the Sierra Nevada Range. In practice, this outside financial control meant the Denver and Rio Grande had very little money to spend on purchasing new rolling stock and motive power. It made do by, among other things, purchasing second-hand locomotives and rebuilding and renumbering older passenger cars and freight cars. By 1913, Business Car K was given a new designation, B8, but otherwise it continued in service pretty much unchanged. In 1916, Two of the four sleeping sections in car B8 were removed and replaced by a pair of lockers. This in turn allowed the observation room at the rear of the car to be enlarged significantly, with a sofa now added for comfort. An ice compartment for perishable food storage while on the road was added about this same time. It occupied a portion of the car's forward platform just outside the kitchen end door. In 1922, the car body and platforms were modified and extension side bearings applied as part of a general fleet upgrade to all narrow gauge passenger cars on the railroad. These changes created a lower center of gravity, helping to lessen the chances of derailments at speed. At some point, the car was upgraded with a water system that used compressed air from the brake system to force feed water into the car from storage tanks. An ingenious part of the system was that hot water was provided via a pipe routed into the cooking stove. The Rio Grande's 1923 official roster noted that business car B8 has standard and narrow gauge trucks, suggesting that the third division superintendent could use it anywhere within his division, simply by having the car's trucks or wheel sets changed. This, of course, would require jacking the car up to make the change, and it must have been an interesting sight to see this relatively narrow car riding on standard gauge trucks. Unfortunately, no pictures are known to exist showing car B8 in this service. By the mid-1920s, the Denver and Rio Grande, now renamed the Denver and Rio Grande Western, was more stable financially and working to modernize and consolidate its remaining narrow gauge lines. Car B8 became surplus to the railroad's needs and in 1927, it was sold to the Uinta Railway, headquartered at Mack, Colorado. The purchase price was a whopping $1,500, with the buyer needing to arrange transportation from Montrose to the line's terminus at Mack, Colorado, some 20 miles northwest of Grand Junction. Colorado's narrow-gauge Uinta Railway was one of this state's more unusual railroad lines. It also was one of its very last narrow-gauge railroads to be constructed. Completed in 1905, it ran for 63 miles along the Colorado-Utah state border over a route characterized by extremely steep grades and very sharp curves. The territory that it served was quite arid and sparsely populated. The line's primary reason for existence was gilsonite, a very pure resinous rock formed from a complex combination of different kinds of hydrocarbons. Used in the early 20th century in a variety of paints and finishes and emulsions, gilsonite had the distinction of being a component in the black lacquer that all early Model T Ford automobiles sported. The Uinta Railway started from the town of Mack, located some 20 miles northwest of Grand Junction. There, the narrow-gauge carrier connected with the Denver and Rio Grande's standard-gauge mainline. For the first 25 miles from Mack to Atchee, the Uinta's grades were relatively mild and curvature was limited. Things changed markedly at Atchee, however. Because of the steep grades and sharp curves that characterized the line over Book Cliff, geared Shea-type locomotives and later specially built articulated double-engine steam locomotives were required to pull relatively short freight trains over the line's major summit at Baxter Pass, elevation 8,437 feet. Grades were as steep as 7.5% for a five-mile section. Compare this with the 4% maximum found on the Denver and Rio Grande's early narrow-gauge lines. 
curvature on this part of the line was extreme as well. In a 12-mile section over the pass, there were 233 curves, or more than 20 per mile. These ranged from 4 degrees to an astonishing 66 degrees, which is so sharp it would create a circle with a radius of less than 90 feet. Retainers were required for all freight trains when descending from Baxter Pass, necessitating speed restrictions as well. Because of these limitations, it took 50 minutes for each train to travel the 5.8 miles from the top of the pass down to Achi, for instance. At the north end of the pass, at a station named Wendella, the special locomotives used over the pass were changed out once again in favor of locomotives better suited for relatively level terrain. The Uinta Railway continued for another 12 or so miles to the settlement of Dragon, Utah, where passengers transferred to stages continuing on to Vernal and Fort Duquesne. After 1911, a branch was even extended in the opposite direction out of Dragon solely to reach additional veins of gilsonite as they were mined. But why all the background on the Uinta Railway? Well, our subject business car, number B8, was an interesting addition to the Uinta. Lettered for its new owner, the car kept the same number it had last used on the Denver and Rear Grand Western. Because of the car's length, however, operating it over the Uinta's rugged route required some adaptations. B8's couplers specifically were modified to allow for more swing on the sharp curves. Existing rare vintage movie footage shows the car positioned at the end of the train, likely required for reasons relating to the coupler swing and the overhang going around the line's extremely sharp curves. We don't know much else about the car's history on the Uinta. It was photographed several times during the 12 years that it spent on the railroad, and like the rest of the line's locomotives and rolling stock, it appears to have been well cared for. Unfortunately, the coming of improved heavy-duty trucks would put the Uinta Railway out of business by 1939. When the line folded, a private party purchased the body of business car B8 with trucks and running gear removed. It was moved to a farm near Grand Junction, where it would stay for the next two decades. While there, it served as a shed and was kept company by the body of another former Uinta Railway passenger car, Combination Baggage Passenger Number 50. In 1958, Colorado Railroad Museum founder Bob Richardson purchased a parcel of land some two miles east of Golden. He was planning to relocate the locomotives and cars he had collected at his narrow-gauge motel and museum in Alamosa, as that location was becoming grouted and Bob was having problems with some of the neighbors. The new site in Golden would become today's Colorado Railroad Museum, opening to the public the very next year, in 1959. In May 1959, the museum purchased the car body of Business Car B8 for $800. Brought to Golden, Colorado by truck, it was equipped in September 1962 with trucks and couplers taken from Rear Grand Southern Outfit Car number 0260, making it more or less complete mechanically. Interestingly, Outfit Car 0260 still exists today. After having its running gear removed, the car body was sold to Michigan's Huckleberry Railroad, where it was fully restored and today is regularly operated. A year after being re-equipped with proper trucks or wheel sets, car B8 was photographed in 1963 on the museum's main line coupled to Denver and Rio Grande Western steam locomotive number 318. Some two decades later, Uinta Railway Combine number 50, which had kept the B8 company while it remained on the farm near Grand Junction, would also be purchased by the Colorado Railroad Museum and moved to Golden. Business Car B8 has been displayed at a variety of locations around the museum grounds over the years. It was periodically given fresh coats of paint and even operated as part of special trains from time to time. In 2013-2014, the car received a thorough refurbishing, emerging from the museum's roundhouse complete with shiny new paint and lettering. One side of the car was painted for the Uinta Railway, while the other featured Denver and Rear Grand Western lettering. 
Today, Business Car B8 remains a favorite of guests who peer in through the end platform windows seeking a glimpse of the car's late 19th century glamour. Among the features that still remain are a partially intact electric call system typical of other railroad business cars and wealthy homes from the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and used to summon the car's cook and porter when something was desired by passengers. A bedroom that isn't depicted in any of the existing diagrams is also there, begging the question of when it was added and by which owner. The car is today painted and lettered to represent its final years on the Denver and Rio Grande Western, and it continues to roam the museum, occasionally being moved to new locations around the grounds. This in turn causes guests who may have overlooked it on previous visits to discover Car B8, allowing them to come face to face with a true veteran of Colorado narrow gauge railroading. In May 2023, the car was part of the Colorado Railroad Museum's weekend long Colorado Crossings event. Along with Rio Grande Southern Business Car Rico, currently painted and lettered to its later appearance as Business Car B21, Car B8 took the place of two other business cars in recreating a special 1946 train. This train had carried railroad authors and photographers Lucius Beebe and Charles Clegg on a special trip over the Rio Grande Southern Railroad, hosted by officials from the Denver and Rio Grande Western. Steeped in history and sporting special status as one of America's oldest existing narrow-gauge passenger cars, Denver and Rio Grande Western Business Car B8 today remains a Colorado Railroad icon. Thanks for joining me today. This long-lived and much-modified rail vehicle, Business Car B8, is a lucky survivor that enjoyed a long service life. Over the course of its interesting career, it served a broad cross-section of railroaders, from diverse construction workers to baggage handlers to railroad executives. From the 1870s until its retirement in 1939, the car roamed far and wide on the state's network of narrow gauge railroads, even reaching into a small part of Utah on account of its time spent with the Uinta Railway. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Business Car B8, and I also hope that your appreciation for Colorado's rich railroad heritage continues to grow with each and every tour of the museum's collections. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.